Hi, in this video I want to show you how to implement a coding system in Interact, how to simplify it, create hierarchies and finally make it a smart and easier to use coding system. Imagine the following situation, we for example observe teaching and training, group meeting or a collaborative working or a child play. Now for all those situations I could use the following coding system. That's my coding system. I named it Teamwork. It consists of classes and codes. And the class would be, for example, Communication. Those are the codes that we give during coding with Interact. Very important to mention is that all codes in a class should be mutually exclusive, meaning they cannot co-occur. Another interesting thing is the class gets exhaustive by adding a null or nil or in this case a none code, meaning a code that you would give if you cannot identify what's happening in the video. For example, the person turns the head away or you don't understand what people are saying or it's a something is happening what you're not interested in. Then you would, for example, call it other or unknown. It doesn't make sense from my perspective to collect data for things that you're not interested in. So why should you collect none or other or unknown codes? At the end, if you coded all the other codes, Interact should just add this information for all the not coded intervals. This allows you to create good statistics. So I would just get rid of all those none codes and then my coding system is getting a little smaller. The next thing I would focus on is replicated information in my coding system. Imagination in real is attached two times as subcodes to about object or about plan. So the people are talking about an object and the object is real or what they are saying is in reality and they're saying something positive, for example. Also those positive and negative codes, they are defined multiple times and that doesn't make sense because at the end of the day, your coding system needs to be easy to use, small and simple because you have a limited amount of time and you have a limited amount of keys on your keyboard. That's why I would take a look at those replications, remove them and turn them into new classes. As I did here, I just called the class context. I added the two codes, imagination and real. I have defined another class with positive and negative as codes. Now, how does that work? In this situation, we just need to link the different codes here about object to a new class, the next codes to the next class, imagination to positive or negative. And that's why it's extremely easy to observe one person and say this person is talking about an object and that object is real and what this person was talking had a positive intention or expression. Now in summary, our original coding system looked like that and we removed all the unnecessary codes we simplified the coding system by creating new classes. We made it smart by linking the codes to different classes. This is very, very handy because then we can reuse the codes of certain classes and say, for example, in engagement, we also want to know is this engagement positive or negative. So we simply need to link the engagement codes to the expression class. And also for strategy, we want to know is this trial and error turned it out positive or negative, then we just link it to the next class. If you would like to know, for example, the aggression level or the comforting level or the friendliness level in communication, we can do the same by adding a new class with a Likert scale and link to communication. In Interact, we take this coding system and we turn each class into a code definition set because that allows us to assign keys of the keyboard to the codes and do some other settings for each code. That's what I'm going to explain in a second. And we save each of those code definition sets under the name of the class. We do the same for the context class and also for the expression class and sure for all the other classes as well. But what I want to show here is this magic trick for linking the codes to different classes. That's exactly what we're doing here with this lexical chain information. And at the end of the chain, 
we identify with this checkbox that this was the last code in that row. This helps Interact to understand how you want to code and what should happen if you push keys on the keyboard to enter data. And that's something I'm going to show you live just in a second. As you can see, I started Interact and opened a video already. Let's go to the code definition window. I have defined my codes in here about object and about plan and the class topic assigned to the key O and P on the keyboard. I did the same for context and expression. And as you can see, I added the hierarchy level as number in front of the file name. And that's very handy because then I can easily understand the hierarchy of my coding system. Let's go to the next level. It's context. I don't need that row, so let's delete it. And expression, the same here, delete it. Now, here comes the magic trick. I go to my first level and I chain the code about object to the next code definition set, which is context. And I do the same here, also here, context. I added the so-called prefix with the same name as I named the class, just with the underscore here. This is doing something very special, which I show you in a minute. Let's go to the next level, context, and I also chain context to expression. Save it. And if I go to the first level, you can see that I have some symbols here. When I click on one of the symbols, this button allows me to follow the chain and I can go backwards and forwards between my hierarchy. This is very handy. If I have a lot of codes here and a lot of links to different levels, I can easily navigate through my coding system. Before we start coding, we need to make sure that we have opened the first level of our coding system. Let me close that. To be able to use this kind of coding system, I need to go to the settings and make sure that I have checked the lexical coding mode. This makes sure Interact starts and stops an event and waits until I entered all the codes that I want to enter. After that, I can create a new event. Let me start observation. Interact created a new document for me, linked the video to my data set. So I have a data group and a data set here, and I can start a new event. I recorded the start and the end time of that specific fragment that I want to observe. Let's assume we focus on this center boy. Let me code that event. He was talking about an object with imagination and said something positive. Here is what happens because we added the prefix to our coding system. We added this topic and context prefix to our class names in the hierarchy level. So let me create a new event. Start, stop. We're talking, he's talking about an object a real object and says something negative. Let's just create some random demo data. If you want to analyze the left boy, I would add a new data set for that and name the data set and say, for example, left boy. And I do the same for the first data set here. And I add a third data set, which I call right boy. So let me focus on the left boy, rewind the video and do the same again. Start and stop events. Talking about an object and the next one. I just want to create some data, as I said before.
Let's do the same for the right boy. Rewind the video and start and stop events. Stop coding. I have a document with three data sets, one data set for each boy. Let's take a look at the statistics. If I open the timeline chart, I see the code archive, which represents all codes given in this document. Okay, I want to see only the center boy, and that's the representation for the data in this data set. This boy is talking about the object with imagination and saying something positive. That's exactly what we see here from start to end, from start to end. If I take a look at the statistics, I see exactly what we have coded here. Four times the boy is talking about the object, one time about the plan. That's four times object, one time the plan. And the same for the duration, for example, or a percentage over time, over this time span here. We have collected the data with a very detailed focus. We have not created any kind of aggregations. Now, what if we want to know how often the boy is talking about an object and saying something positive? Here comes the trick. We go to transform, select move and combine, and combine the codes of topic with the codes of expression, for example. And let's create a new class. Combine one, for example. And in a creates a new document and I get this information that I want to have about object positive is now a new code and I get the statistics and the codes are added to our code archive. If you take a look at just boy number one, I see the combined codes in here. So this is the representation for those three codes and that's a representation for those three codes. The cool thing now is that I get this in my statistics here at the end. So one time I have this combination and I get the duration for it, for example, and also the minimum maximum percentage and so on. If you would have collected this information as an aggregated code already, we would never be able to do any kind of other combinations to get different questions answered. In this case, I can combine any kind of codes of any classes to get any of the questions answered that I have. If I would have collected those codes with the aggregated meaning already, I would never be able to do any other kind of analysis. Say, for example, I want to know how long they're talking something positive, how long they're talking something negative, or how long they're talking about a plan or how often they're talking about an imagination. That's a great value of having a very detailed coding system and letting Interact do the aggregation. This can also be done much easier. Let's show it again. Let's go to move and combine. Just select all the codes. Say, okay, combine two, for example. I get in a document with the data sets. Interact has combined all the codes of each event into a new code, which has an aggregated meaning. I can, for example, uh, delete that class here. If I go to analysis, full statistics, I want to see everything and all the data sets. I get the information for the duration of each single code that I gave, also for the combinations I hope I could show you the value of creating a smart coding system and collecting information that is not aggregated. See you in one of the next tutorials. Bye bye.